Mm. High tech. Uh, Silva Lomacheco, explosive performance yesterday. Um, he looked great versus Anthony Crowley. Um I think he clearly showed that anyone that's a C plus or B minus level fighter has no business being being in the ring with him. I think he he clearly showed that. Um, salute to him. Salute to his team. Great performance. Uh, he did a great job of putting the pressure on Anthony Corolla. Was cutting the ring off extremely well. Jab was looking good. One two was good. His left hook to the body was sneaking in there. Um, he threw punches and bunches, but he had a good steady pace. Anthony Crowla, it almost looked like he threw no punches. He he looked very intimidated in the ring. Um, immediately was backed up into corners, and his lateral movement was, you know, he was getting trapped every other 30 seconds. So um, I think, you know, uh, I don't know if Crowla has to retire or anything about that. I've heard rumblings about that. It's just levels. You know, he clearly was not on Lomachenko's level, you know. Um, Lomachenko took him to school. It was a brutal knockout. It was a... Um, it looked kind of weird at the end. Uh, with the... Because uh, Jack Reese scored a knockdown. Because Krola's, you know, his butt was on the ropes. You know, it was clearly the ropes that was holding him up. And Lomachenko started celebrating. And then you had some... Members of like I guess the security or commission, they were you know they got in the ring and Jack Reese yelled at him to get out because the fight wasn't over. Crowley was you know still up. It's just you know the ropes was holding him up. Um, so that was a little bit weird. Gotta watch out for Jack Reese, man. He's been in some weird um, knockdowns lately. Obviously the Wilder Fury was controversial in knockdowns. Not the knockdown, but the the count was controversial. And then now this goofy incident, not necessarily his fault, uh, you know, because uh, Lomacheco ended up stopping him literally the next round anyway with that brutal, brutal hook. So it is what it is. Um, Lomacheco called out Mikey, so is Bob Arrow. Um, they went in on Tank Davis. Um, you know, Bob Arrow said, you know, it's up to Floyd. You know, if Floyd doesn't think Tank is ready, then uh, it's not really to talk about. Uh, yeah, I would have to agree with that. Um, I don't know if he's not necessarily ready, but it's more of just Floyd would have put him in there. I mean, I have no problem with the fight. I think it's a great fight. I think uh, Tank Davis, I, I have different standards for champions, so um, I think he'll do better, actually, at 135 than 130. Um, Tank has yet to show since he's been on this championship level that he can make weight consistently. Um, if he can make weight consistently, then no problem, you know, if you want to stay at 130. But uh, the only fights I want to see tank in is really, uh, at 130 anyway, is Farmer and Burchelt, who's with Golden Boy. I doubt Oscar and Floyd will work together anytime soon, unless the masses just demanded that fight. But um, uh, to me, it's Tevin Farmer. Eddie Hearn said, he has no problem letting Tevin Farmer fight on Showtime, as long as the money's good. So, um, if that is indeed true, then I don't see any reason why Tank shouldn't fight Farmer by the end of this year. And as far as Lomachenko goes, Mikey Garcia coming all the way back down for 147 um, and fighting Lomachenko, I think that would be a mistake. Um, I think he should take at least one tune-up. Um, it's not fair that he, you know, he's kind of holding the vision hostage. So, um, you know, I, uh, I think Luke Campbell and Devin Haney might be linked to fight. Because I know Devin Haney spoke with the zone not too long ago. Luke Campbell, he's promoted by Eddie Hearn. So, um, and Devin Haney, he's his own promoter, so he can go wherever he wants. And I think he's ranked number three, Campbell's number one. So, uh, that's a fight they're probably linking up to. Um. And Eddie Hearn, Bob Arab, they've been working together more and more lately. So if uh, Campbell can get the belt, then don't be shocked if Loma goes undisputed in that route, fighting Campbell or Richard Comey. Um, but I think Teofimo Lopez is ranked pretty high up there as well. And he did clarify that 
this is his last year at 135, so him fighting Lomachenko could happen if, you know, Bob wants it uh, by the end of the year. Uh, but Lopez is not moving up till next year. So, um, and I, I assume they're going to want to keep him active. You know, he's fighting next week um, against a solid opponent, you know, a former title challenger. Um, so if he looks good in that fight, maybe one more fight in the summer. Looks good again and gets another former title challenger, contender. Hey, why not? You know, um, he's been calling for it. So, and if Lomachenko can't get Mikey by the end of the year, which I don't think he will, he'll probably fight Richard Comey, possibly, maybe next. So, uh, 135 is popping. A lot of young talent. A lot of young talent there. Um, like I said, Devin Haney, Teofimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia. He's the most green of the three, but um, he's a good prospect. Um, don't forget about Robert Easter Jr. He's still a solid fighter. He can make some noise. He actually beat Richard Comey for the belt about two years ago, so against Richard Comey. So 135 is making a lot of noise. Lomachenko, great performance. He looks sensational. Um, he did what he was supposed to do against an inferior opponent. Kind of felt bad for him. <laughs> Even he said... Uh, um, you know, he had to, like, find a way to get motivated for this fight. So, you know, clearly the opposition wasn't enough. So, um, hey, salute to the man. Keep doing what you're doing. Hopefully other big fights can happen at 135, but a lot of potential. Hopefully Mikey comes back down the smart way and then uh, get it cracking for, i probably say, 2020 the most, the earliest. Um, I don't think Mikey should just jump all the way back down and fight a top guy. Coming off a win or a loss, I don't think that'd be a smart idea. Um, you know, you gotta, one, check your confidence, and two, see if you can even make 135. So He didn't put a lot of muscle at 147 or anything, so I don't think it'll be too bad, but better safe than sorry, in my opinion. You know, you only get one career to do it right, so we'll see what happens. But uh, great performance by Lomachenko. Um, check out Clarissa Shields versus Christina Hammer. It's on Showtime. Uh, also got Peter Quillen versus Caleb Truax. I think that card is starting probably in about a couple minutes. Um, I don't know if I picked Quillen earlier, but I might pick Truax. It, it depends if, if Quillen's power slows down Truax. If it does, Quillen, if not... I can see Truax making a, a rough, rough fight. That's on Fox Sports 1. So there's some good boxing. And then the playoffs. A lot, of, a lot of good sports action going on. You got my Brooklyn Nets stealing a win in Philly. Um, the Magic just got a game winner versus the Raptors. So playoffs is nice. Lomachenko had a good performance. Zerto had a good performance. Got an undisputed fight going on tonight. Truax, Peter Quinn, battle, battle of a former champion. So good, good sports day. So um, definitely stay tuned, drop a comment, like, subscribe, take it easy guys.